In this video, I want to talk about the last of the conditions for a process to be stationary, and that is for the process to have a constant covariant structure. Mathematically, what this means is that the covariant of xt with xt plus h has got to be some function of h, and importantly, is not some function of time. Okay, so what does that actually mean? So let's first of all think about a series xt, and let's draw it. So perhaps our xt looks something like this. Okay, so I've been quite careful in drawing this such that the process looks like it's got a constant mean, so perhaps the mean is somewhere like that. And it also looks like it has perhaps some sort of constant variance when looked at on the sort of aggregate level. But notice that the series is definitely changing. It changes around the sort of level which I'm indicating by this vertical line here. So we could perhaps think about the series to the left of this vertical line as perhaps satisfying some sort of relationship that xt is equal to 0.5 times xt minus 1 plus perhaps some sort of error, et. Okay, so that's the left of that line. It looks like that could be satisfied here. And to the right of that, well, it almost certainly isn't the case. If xt is sort of above the mean in one period, then it's below it in the next period. So this sort of autoregressive relationship here looks like xt is related to xt minus, mon, uh, xt minus 1, rather, by the relationship xt is equal to minus 0.5 times xt minus 1, plus perhaps some error. So notice that the way in which I've drawn it here, it seems to be the case that the relationship between xt and xt minus 1 to the left of the line is different to it to the right of the line. And another way of saying that is that the covariance between xt and xt minus 1 has changed. So in this circumstance, we've got that the, or if I actually write it out mathematically, we've got that the covariance of xt with xt minus 1 is itself some function of time. Hence, the process is definitely not covariant stationary. So what does a covariant stationary process look like? Well, we can think about the example whereby xt is perhaps equal to 0.5 times xt minus 1 plus some error et. Perhaps that's this line at the top here. Or perhaps it just stays like this. So perhaps my xt here is equal to minus 0.5 times xt minus 1 plus et. So those are both examples of covariant stationary processes. Well, at least they're covariant stationary in the regard that xt or the covariance of xt with xt minus 1 is constant across time. Okay, so why do we actually care? Well, let's think about it in regards to linear regression. So let's assume that we have a process which is both variance, covariance, and mean stationary. So this is our yt. And then we have some xt, which looks something like the graph above. So we have a situation where, sort of to the left of this point here, the process looks like it's got some sort of um, autoregressive behavior whereby xt is related by this function up here. And to the right of this line, it looks like it's got a completely different functional relationship, perhaps given by this equation here. So why is this problematic for linear regression? Well, the idea is that we could actually write down our linear regression equation, which is yt is equal to alpha plus beta xt plus some error ut. Well, the idea is that if xt changes in terms of its structure, so this xt is changing around this sort of point here in the middle, then if yt really was related to xt by some sort of linear combination of xt, then yt's nature would also change. So there's no way if I have a yt which doesn't change and I have an xt which does change in its covariant structure that this can actually be true. And in this circumstances, it is in fact going to be violated. So what do we actually want? Well, we'd want a process which is covariant stationary for a y, and we'd also want a process which is covariant stationary for our x. So perhaps my xt looks something like that. And perhaps a different situation might be if I had a yt which did something like this. 
And I also had an XT which did something quite similar. So perhaps my XT, perhaps I draw it in the same color, also did something like this. So you can see that both here in the sort of second example, the YT and the XT are both covariant stationary. So you can suppose that there is some magnification factor that takes me from XT to YT in both of these circumstances. So that's why we require that processes are covariant stationary as well as being variant and mean stationary.